building the order management microservices, creating the front end website. In this video, we're going to be examining the front end and what components the front end requires. We're also going to be talking about the API clients and how they are used to communicate to the other microservices. And then after that, I'm going to do a code walkthrough, which is a demonstration of the front end code. So the front end has forms, and these are stored in form classes. The templates of the front end can be extended, and the API clients handle the API requests to the microservices. We're also going to be using sessions that store the user and order data once we've got those details from those microservices. The API clients that I've created communicate to their respected microservices. So the user client communicates to the user microservice, the product client communicates to the product microservice, and of course the order client communicates to the order microservice. Next, we're going to dive straight into the code. We're going to be looking at the app structure, the routes, the forms, the templates, and of course, these API clients. So let's focus on the front end application. Make sure that you do a Git clone of the Git repository. The link is provided on the screen here and then open up the front end. We can see that there's a whole bunch of folders here. We have app, we've got bin, we've got docs, and we've got tests. We've also got a Docker file and we've got Docker compose files. Now, don't worry too much about Docker right now. We've got a whole section on Docker later on in this course. Let's just focus on the app folder because this is where the actual application lives for the front end. So let's open up that folder and we have a static folder and we have a front end blueprint folder. Now, the static folder has what you probably can imagine the static assets of this application. So we have CSS and we have images. Now the front end folder itself is a Flask blueprint and I'll be talking about that more in just a second. Open up the app.py file because this is the actual file that is ran when the application is first booted. Here what you're going to see is a whole bunch of imports. So we're using Flask, we're using the Flask login package, we're also using Bootstrap, and of course, we're importing the front end blueprint. So we start the app, we, we equal that to Flask, we start the login manager, we start the Bootstrap, we configure the application, and we register the front end blueprint. Finally, after that, we run the application. So let's take a look at the front end blueprint. Let's open that up. And in here, we have a folder for API. We've got a folder for templates and we've got forms and we've got roots. Now, if we open up the roots file, this is the file that holds all the roots for the front end application. It also imports a whole bunch of stuff for the front end to work, including render template, session, redirect, URL for, flash and request. It also imports the forms. It also imports the API clients, so user client, order client, and product client. These clients are basically helpers that allow us to communicate to the microservices. I'll be discussing that in more detail in just a second. Now, as I've mentioned, the roots file holds all the roots required in this front end application. And these are split up in Flask using a root like so, and then the controller. So this is the home page. It's forward slash, it is a get request, and that is assigned the controller of home. If you go all the way down this file, you see all sorts of other routes, including login, including register, and we've got logout and product, and so on and so forth. Let's scroll right to the top and go through each one of these individually. So let's take a look at what the home page is actually trying to achieve. So the first thing we do is we check if the current user is authenticated and we're using the Flask login to do that. If the user is authenticated, we get the order from the session. And then what we try and do is get the products from the product API client. We then render a template, which is home and index.html, passing in the products that we've retrieved from the products API. So this template, home index.html, is actually in the templates folder, in the home folder, in the index.html file. And you'll see that 
all of these routes render templates that register back to, so this one, for example, register index.html goes to register and then index.html. Let's just take a look at the homepage one first. So we're using the Jinja2 templating system here, and this allows us to extend to other templates to use template inheritance. So what we're doing here is we're extending from base call one. And if I open that up, which is here, this is extending from base.html. So let's open that one up. And this is the base template for every template that extends. So we've got meta, we've got title, we've got JavaScript, and we've got the actual content block. Now these blocks allow us to inject parts of different templates into these block sections. So for example, in the index.html, we have a title block that gets injected into the base.html right here. So let's go back into the index.html and take a look at what's going on in the page content block. So we've passed in products and what we're doing is we're checking the length of the products to make sure that we have products available. If we have products, we then loop over those products. So this is for product in products results. So this is looping through the API response. And then we create this div block here for every product that we have. And then we inject that into the page content block itself. So what we're doing is we're getting the product name, we're getting the image SRC. This is from the static folder that I showed you before. And we're also printing out things like the URL and the price. If of course we don't have any products, we simply just return no products found. And then we end that block. So let's take a look at the other routes. So let's close that up, go into the roots.py file, and then scroll to the next route, which is the forward slash login. So this is the template that logs in the user. This template requires a form. So we can see the form being generated here. So form equals forms.login. This forms login class is actually in the forms file here. So let's open the forms.py file and you can see all of the form classes used in this application. This is the login form that we're working with at the moment. It has a couple of properties. So we have username, password, and submit. And these are assigned different fields from the WT forms package. So up here, you can see we're importing flask forms and we're also importing the string field, password field, submit field, and so on. We're also using validators. So we've got the data required and the email validation. And we can pass these validators into the particular fields that we're using. So at the moment, the username and the password has the validators of data required. This ensures that there are data supplied with these form fields when the form is submitted. Okay, so let's go back to the roots.py file, scroll down a little further. And now what we're doing is we're dealing with the post request. If I just showed you the top of the route here, so we have a methods get and post, because of course the login page needs to be able to work in a get request. So this is just displaying the form as well as a post request when the form is actually submitted. So this is what we're doing here on line 37. If request method is equal to post, then what we do is we validate on submit. Now this is going to be using those validators that we saw in the form classes. And if the form is valid, then what we do is we retrieve an API key when we try and attempt to do a post login. So I'm gonna be talking about this in greater detail when we talk about the user service and how the user service actually can be used to log a user into the system. Once we have the API key, what we do is we retrieve the user and then we get the order from the order client. After that, we create a flash message. Now this flash message will be used to display a simple message based on a session parameter on the page. And then we redirect and we redirect the user to another route. So in this case, we're redirecting to front end and then home. So that's redirecting to the home page. This happens when the user is logged in. If the user, however, doesn't submit the correct credentials, we have a flash message of cannot log in and we pass in the category of error. Now these messages are actually displayed if I go into the templates folder and then go into 
underscore messages.html. These are how the flash messages are actually displayed. So you can pass in the category filters of error and then success or info, and these different sections are displayed. So you can actually customize the look and feel, and we're using the Bootstrap CSS components to actually allow us to do this. So let's go back to the roots. So let's close the templates for now, open up roots.py, and take a look at the register. So scroll down a little bit. This also takes both a GET and a POST request. This is running off of forward slash register. We start the register form, and if we go into the forms.py file, we can take a look at that particular form, which is this one here. It's slightly similar to the actual login form. However, there are more fields that we're using. And of course, with the email address, we're also supplying the email validator to that field. So let's go back into the roots.py file, scroll down a little further. We're validating on submit like we were doing with the login form. We're pulling out the username from that form request and we're checking whether that username exists. If the username does exist, then we are returning an error. And if the user doesn't exist, then we can continue on and register the user. And this is done in these redirects like so. Okay, so the next route is the logout route, which simply does a session clear. And after that, we have the products route. Now the products route supplies a slug. So notice that, that it has a greater than and less than symbols. That is actually a parameter that is supplied to the get request. We can put that into the controller like so. So we get the product from the slug. So that's the product client get products. And we also have a form that is used on that product page that allows us to actually add that product to the basket. We check that the user has logged in. We check that the session is active because of course you need to be logged in in order to add stuff to your basket. And then we post that to the order client. And then after that, we simply just render out the product template. And again, these templates are in the front end templates folder. So this one is product and then index.html. We're passing in both the item and the form to this template. So let's open that up. And we can see that we're printing out parts of the actual product. So here we're printing out the product name. We're printing out the image SRC again and the price. We're also printing out the form. So form and then hidden tag. And then we're printing out the other bits of pieces as well. So let's go back to the roots.py file. Let's close templates down and go into the roots.py file. Okay, so let's take a look at the order pages. The first one is the forward slash checkout page. This is ensuring that both the user and the order are both in session because in order to check out, you need to log in to the system. And of course, you need to have an order in order to check out. So once those are true, we can then get the order from the order client. We are then ensuring that there are things within this order, and then we're doing a post checkout. So this is an API request, which is a post request to check out the order. After that, we then redirect the user to the thank you controller, which is down here. So this is the thank you route. So order forward slash thank you. It is a get request. And again, we're checking that the user and the order are both in session. And then we remove the order from the session. And then we return a success message, which is this flash message here. Thank you for your order. And we render the template order and then thank you.html. Okay, so that's the roots, that's the templates, and that's the forms. Let's now take a look at the clients. These clients allow us to communicate to the API endpoints. And these are in the API folder here. Let's open that up and we can see that we have the order client, we have the product client, and we have the user client. Let's take a look at the product client first. Now the product client allows us to communicate to the product microservice through a series of API endpoints. The first one I'm going to show you is the get products. Now this returns all of the products known to the microservices. And the second one is the get product that returns a single product based on the supplied slug. So these are doing a API request to the product service API product. That is the endpoint passing in the slug. And then that simply returns the JSON response. So 
The next one I'll show you is the user client. It's slightly more involved if I scroll up to the top here. The user client allows us to communicate to the user microservice, much like the product client. And what we've got here is a post login. So this is actually logging the user in. We supply the form that's getting the username and the password from the form. It's doing a post request back to the user microservice API user login. And it's returning the API key if known. We also have the does exist. So this is checking whether the username exists or doesn't exist when the user is registering. We also have a post user create. So this is creating the user. This is what's used in the registration. And we have the get user. Now this returns the details about that user from the user microservice based on the supplied API key. Now I'm going to be talking about the API keys a little bit more when we talk about the security side of this microservice. Let's now take a look at the order client. So let's open up orderclient.py. Again, this is very similar to the other clients in the sense that this allows us to communicate to one of the microservices. And in this case, it is the order client. We've got methods in here such as get order, update order, post add to cart, and then we have post checkout. All of these things allow us to communicate to the actual order microservice, supplying in whatever we need to update and change or check out the actual order. And I'm going to be explaining how these microservices handle the requests from these API clients and return the relevant responses when I talk about those microservices individually.